Hi, I'm Cheryl Fleckenstein from Community Presbyterian Church, and this is Midday Prayer. As God spoke, calling light out of darkness, God's glory shines in the face of Jesus the Christ. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm today is Psalm 35, verses 1 through 10. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and confounded those who seek evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause, they hid their net for me. Without cause, they dug a pit for my life. Let ruin come on them unawares and let the net that they hid ensnare them. Let them fall into it to their ruin. Then my soul shall rejoice in the Lord, exulting in God's deliverance. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like you? You deliver the weak from those too strong for them, the weak and needy from those who would despoil them. Our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. They came, the disciples and Jesus, to the other side of the sea, to the country of the, of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart and the shackles he broke into pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to the man, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged Jesus earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding. And the unclean spirits begged Jesus, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. And then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by the demons begged him that he might be with Jesus. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy God has shown you. And the man went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. Jewish ritual separates the world into the clean and the unclean. 
The elements of impurity in this story pile up one on top of another. The unclean spirit, the man dwelling among the tombs, the large herd of swine. The story ventures so shockingly into the chaos of impurity that the possessed man is described as raving and depraved to the point of howling like a wild animal rather than speaking in any known language. The point is strikingly clear. This poor man has been stripped of every shred of humanity. Likewise, in many of the miracles and exorcisms of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, healing involves breaking down traditional boundaries so that persons formally excluded from the community are once again included. When this man is healed, he progresses from the non-human life of a rabid animal to that of a person with a home and friends. But he does not return home to take up life as usual. His life has been dramatically changed by Jesus. Healing has given him a new mission, to let others know that God's healing power can overcome the very worst evils in human experience. Healing has a mission, and it involves transformation of a whole being, not just returning to the status quo. Likewise, we could say that COVID has stripped us of humanity, resulting in horrible divisions between people, and also forcing us to be physically separated in order to be safe. What is core to us as human beings has been taken away from us, our ability to be physically together. But now that the vaccine is being administered more and more widely and in an increasingly more systematic fashion, we are thinking about returning possibly to the status quo. Or have we? Have we instead been transformed to share God's love with each other in a new and more vibrant way than we did before? We shall see. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord our God, you are great indeed in majesty and splendor, wrapped in light as with a robe. In the solitude of a mountain height, you revealed your glory in Jesus the Christ, even as he faced his crucifixion. We praise you for this glimpse of the mystery of our redemption. You love the world so much that you sent your beloved son to dwell with us. He who bears your very image through him, all things have been created. He took our flesh and suffered death that we may be made whole. And by his death, we conquer death. And by his rising, we too have been given eternal life. So we praise you for your saving grace. Transfigure us by your spirit and let your light so shine in all we do and say, that the world may see your radiant love guiding all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
The God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.